What's up everybody, how's it going? So I've talked a lot about Facebook and Google on this channel, especially as they relate to software engineering. But one company that I haven't really talked about at all is Microsoft, largely because I don't have experience with Microsoft. But today, this changes. In this video, we're gonna cover everything that you need to know about Microsoft. And the way that we're gonna do that is by being joined by my good friend Tim from Tech with Tim. He has a very cool YouTube channel with super high quality tech tutorials and really awesome tech content in general. Be sure to check him out. I'll put the link to his channel in the description and in the comments below. But so Tim interned at Microsoft this past summer, and I'm gonna be asking him all sorts of questions about Microsoft, including even whether or not Microsoft should be part of Fang. So with that, let's jump into it. Okay, so Tim, why don't we start by talking about compensation, perks, and benefits? What do you have to tell us about that at Microsoft? Yeah, so of course I was just an intern, so you know I didn't get stock, I didn't get crazy benefits like I know a lot of the other full-time employees did, but personally my salary, I can't tell you the exact figure because that's breaking NDA, was around like seven to $8,000 US a month. So that's already ridiculously high, especially because I live in Canada and that works its way to like 11 or $12,000 at you know, 19, 20 years old. Um, I know as yeah. a full-time employee, they give um, stock vested over four years, I believe, and then usually signing bonuses. I've heard that the signing bonuses are in the range of about 25 to 50K. And I can say that I am returning next year as an intern at Microsoft, and there is a signing bonus for me as an intern. It's not nearly that large, but there is you know, something that they're giving. Uh, in terms of benefits, I know all the full-time employees that I talked to and that worked on my team absolutely love the benefits from Microsoft. I think the only thing they don't have is vision, but I know they have dental, medical, like anything you can imagine it's pretty much covered from them. And every person that I've talked to, including, you know, managers, coworkers, uh, has said that, you know, this is one of the best companies they've ever worked for when it comes to benefits. So unfortunately, I'm not full time, so I can't give too much information, but that's kind of um, what I've understood. And also discounts on Microsoft products. I believe I got 80% off on all software, only 10% off on hardware, because that is like, you know, marked up like they can't mark it down anymore, I guess, for employees. Uh, but yeah, it's really nice because I bought a few Windows keys and stuff and saved, you know, a few hundred dollars on that. Yeah, the discounts sound pretty good because especially like there are a lot of Microsoft products out there that I'm assuming you could you could pick from. Yeah, and like controllers, just like, you know, any Xbox games, any software, like they make a lot of stuff that I didn't even know they made until I started looking through the company store. So it's nothing crazy, but, you know, definitely something that's worth mentioning. Damn, Xbox games. Yeah. Some people are going to be jealous about that. <laughs> sure. So yeah, all things considered, it sounds like Microsoft has really good compensation, great perks and benefits. Um, so that's a plus one there. Now let's talk about tech stack and internal tools. How good are those at Microsoft? Maybe tell us a little bit about the, the types of tech stacks that various teams work on. Sure, yeah. So I know that Microsoft has their own like official programming languages, right? You can imagine that many teams are working with like C, C++, C Sharp, uh, Visual Basic, all that kind of stuff. I know on my team, at least, we were in like a much more modern tech stack. So I was working on the Python extension for Visual Studio Code. Funny enough, there's almost no code in Python in that code base, only like some tests for specific scripts. We, I actually wrote all my code in TypeScript and React. Um, so TypeScript obviously was developed by Microsoft. It's a superset of JavaScript. Uh, and that was actually really cool. So we're using like all those kind of modern technologies. They have uh, all the repositories set up so you can build them locally and all that, like, you know, automated pipelines and stuff like you would assume. In terms of internal tools, I didn't end up really using any internal tools myself, but everything is run on Azure, right? So like their, you know, okay. cloud platform. So everything, like literally everything is on that. And any like website that you go to, it's all hosted off of that. We had a Teams page. It was like a dashboard with all the telemetry and all of that. That was all on Azure. And it's kind of nice because it's all one platform. It's pretty cohesive. So I can't talk too much about the internal tools because I didn't like build any or really use many, but the ones that I did see were were pretty good and yeah they're with azure and again you know in that kind of realm yeah it sounds like like both the tech stack and the internal tools are are really good I, the tech stack is obviously a little bit um dependent on your mm -hmm. preferences but personally i love typescript react so i would have loved that tech stack and by the way fun fact it turns out that the team that uh, tim worked on at microsoft is actually like a very similar team to the one that I worked on at Facebook. When I was at Facebook, I was also working on extensions for uh, VS Code, the IDE. And I think that 
Tim's team may have communicated with my former Facebook team at one point or another, kind of like, you know, in some sort of collaborative way. So this kind of goes to show you how small the tech world is in some sense. I'm pretty certain they did because I know we have pretty close communications with Facebook and I heard a lot about Facebook when I was working at Microsoft. Yeah, it's just so funny that, that we ended up on like <laughs> the same the same sub product. Seriously, yeah. These companies do have like a lot of different things that you can work on. So it is a small world. But um, okay, why don't we talk about projects and team matching? So do you feel like you had access to a lot of different projects that you could have worked on at Microsoft? Uh, were there exciting projects at Microsoft? It sounds like you enjoyed your project, your team. And also, could you tell us a little bit about the team matching process? How did you end up joining this team as opposed to another team? Sure, so I'll actually start with the team matching just because unfortunately I can't really give a good answer for this because my situation is a lot different than many other Microsoft interns. I actually applied specifically for this team. So long story okay. short, someone almost, I don't wanna say recruited me, but I knew a contact on that team and I applied directly to that team and not in like the standard process that an intern would go through. So I had three interviews with people that were on the team that I was gonna work on. So I didn't really have an option there, but I know that um, they're definitely very set on putting you on a team that you're gonna be happy with. And from what I've seen, okay. um, I was even given the option to move to another team if I wanted to next year when I go back. Uh, and there's like a lot of flexibility when it comes to moving around, but that's based on, you know, the internal budgets of those teams and all of that. In terms of projects, yeah, I worked on a, a few different things at Microsoft and I did have a lot of different options. Now, my team was kind of in a situation where we weren't sure exactly the direction we were going in just because there was some new stuff that we were working on. So there was a really exciting thing that I can't actually talk about that I wanted to work on, but we didn't have it well defined enough yet. So I wasn't able to do that. But I was given, you know, probably three or four different options and then I ended up picking two of them and then I kind of worked on the third one at the end. So it was like once I got through these ones, I could do it in whatever order I wanted. Then I moved on to that. What I specifically did, my big project, uh, was working in VS Code to export Jupyter Notebooks. Um, it's like a format for writing Python code uh, into uh, PDF, HTML, and Python scripts. So just a cool thing, they have it in Jupyter itself, which is kind of how all that runs on the back end, but we wanted to bring it into VS Code. So yeah, it was definitely interesting. I actually ended up writing pretty much entirely new code, which was kind of fun because I didn't have to mess <laughs> around in you know the old code base with all this legacy stuff or broken stuff going on. And I'll just note one thing quickly, uh, I found it really interesting that although you know you kind of assume that these big tech companies are going to have you know state of the art code bases everything's going to be perfect but even in these companies at least where I was you know compromises were made right stuff got got through that probably shouldn't have just for the ease of time uh, and yeah, I just wanted to point that out that, you know, not everything's perfect. And I was digging through a lot of code at some points where I was like, who who wrote all of this? Right. This is like an inevitable part yeah. of software <laughs> engineering. Like when you join a company, especially a big tech company, you're always starry eyed. You think you're going to see the best code ever. And sometimes you do, but you also see the realities of a production code base, which are that yeah, there's gonna be some bad code sometimes or compromises being made. One more thing about that. Uh, did you get any visibility into like some of the, let's say hot projects at Microsoft, like maybe um, the Xbox or Windows, that kind of stuff, you know, the, the classic Microsoft products? Yeah, so it's interesting you asked that. Um, one thing that I did hear about, I think it was called the HoloLens or the, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, like those new, yeah. like, you know, augmented reality glasses that Microsoft is coming out with. Uh, but no, I really didn't hear a lot about, you know, all the Xbox stuff, all the new surfaces, whatever it may be. That was kind of not in my division. And we'll talk about that later, but the company is so massive. If I wanted to hear about that, I probably could, but there wasn't like, you know, an announcement page or something that was saying like, you know, this is all the cool stuff that we're doing that wasn't like easily accessible. Right, so maybe this is a good time to jump into that topic, the topic of transparency and kind of like work culture. Did you feel like you knew what was going on at the company, like at a higher level or in other organizations? You kind of hinted at that right now, but like I think back to when I was at Google and Facebook, we would get pretty frequent either emails or live streams from upper leadership. And we usually had a lot of visibility into like what the company was doing. Obviously, since the companies are really big, you have to kind of look for what you want to learn about. But is it accessible? is what I'm asking. Yeah, I think it's definitely accessible, but I think it just becomes a little bit more difficult to even 
find the right contact when you're in a company that is as big as Microsoft, which is about 150,000 yeah. people. So personally, I was in the developer division, which is specifically set on building developer tools like VS Code, like Visual Studio, all of that stuff. And so I didn't really like see anything about Windows. I didn't see anything about Xbox and it wasn't really even told to me. There was not really any like, high level objectives from like Satya or like, you know, the executive team of Microsoft itself. I did hear and talk to a lot of people that were the executives of our organization, which I think was a few thousand people or maybe 10,000 people or something like that. So in in that sense, yes, but not as like a company as a whole, just because they've spread it out in a way where you have kind of like the company, a bunch of organizations within the company, and then, you know, teams and divisions within those organizations. So within my division and the organization, yeah, I kind of knew about the high level objectives as an intern, not as much. There was some meetings about it that I just didn't even attend. It wasn't really relevant to me. But Microsoft yeah. as a whole, no, not really. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I think the, the the size of the company, Microsoft is even bigger than Google and yeah. Facebook as far as headcount, I think. Um, so that, that makes sense. Now, one topic that I wanted to talk about, because obviously I talk about this a lot on my YouTube channel, is interviews. Are the technical interviews that you had to pass at Microsoft you know, difficult? What can you tell us about them? Can you tell us about, you know, maybe a tool or platform that someone could use if they wanted to prepare for those interviews? Yeah, definitely. So the interviews, um, a lot of people, because I, I was doing a lot of research before my interviews and people were saying, oh, the Microsoft interviews are easy relative to Google and all these other companies. I don't have a huge perspective because I just did interviews at Shopify, um, which was just a design question and then at Microsoft. But personally, I had three technical interviews and one phone interview. So I had my first phone interview with a recruiter, passed that, and then was flown out and did three in-person technical interviews back to back. So from what I heard, other interns had two or three, some of them had four. Uh, my questions were not that hard. I would give them like, you know, medium, medium, and then hard. Uh, but the thing is that I realized at least at Microsoft was they weren't really that concerned that I necessarily got the answer right or had like the most optimal algorithm. They were really w w uh, worrying, I guess, about how I was thinking about it, right? Like they loved the fact yep. that since I teach online all the time. I was just constantly talking through everything that I was doing. And that helped me a ton because even there would be points where, you know, I would make like a minor mistake or something and they would just tell me the mistake and just be like, yeah, just, just keep going. And there might've been times where I was like, kind of going on the wrong path. And just because I was talking about it so much and they were able to hear that and knew about that, they would kind of shift me back in the right direction. So my two first questions were easy, medium, like, you know, kind of an average difficulty, I guess you would put out. And this last one I had was actually really hard. Um, and I did manage to finish it, but it took a little bit over the hour time slot. Uh, in terms of preparing for it, I've said this all the time. I used leak code, but algo expert is definitely the number one thing that I used. And I'm not just saying that because this is Clement. Uh, before we even did any videos together, I was using it. Uh, and it was really just a great platform because of the explanations that came along with the questions. That's what allowed me to excel because if I didn't know the answer to the question, unlike on leak code, I would have to like struggle really hard to figure it out. On algo expert, I could watch like a minute or two of the explanation, kind of get a hint and then move forward and actually solve it myself. Yeah, I remember when we partnered with you, like you you actually used the product yeah. and used it to prepare for your interviews and you, you gave us really positive feedback. So if you're preparing for your coding interviews, if you want to get into Microsoft or any big tech company, check out algo expert, go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code Clem, C-L-E-M for a discount on the platform. So the last topic that I want to talk about, Tim, now is uh, work velocity. What I mean by that is, is the culture of work at Microsoft slow? Is it fast paced? Like for context, at Facebook, people usually say that the work culture is very fast paced. At Google, it's a little bit slower, a little bit more uh, hoops to jump through, a little bit more concern for technical excellence. Whereas at Facebook, it's kind of just like ship products. How is it at Microsoft? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's probably a little bit of a hybrid of that. Again, right, it really depends like what team you're on and what organization you're on. I imagine like if you're the Xbox team, like, you know, you're competing with like PS5, right? So you're going as fast as you can. But for me, at least we're right. doing developer tools. There was a lot more focus on just getting some quality work done and making sure this was going to be sustainable long term than it was on, you know, just push it out, go as fast as possible. I can say, you know, we had a bunch of releases that were delayed and there was no big deal about that. No one was upset. There wasn't any bosses, you know, screaming at people. It was just, you know, oh, we need an extra day or two to really polish this up. That's totally fine. And we'll do that. Um, I think as the company gets bigger from what I've gauged and just talking to you and other people, it does slow down a bit. You know, there's just way more levels, more levels of approval. I know 
uh, like my boss's boss always had to keep talking to, you know, the director, whoever it may be, and was like, oh, you know, can we do this? Can we do that? I need approval for that. So it did take a little bit longer, maybe sometimes to do something, but I didn't really feel that impact at all on development level. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, listen, tech, uh, it was tech, sorry. <laughs> Tim, this was super insightful. Thanks so much for sharing uh, all that you shared about Microsoft. From everything that you've said, it sounds like you had a great time and you even said that you're gonna be going back there next year, right? Yeah, I'm gonna be joining them again as an intern next year. I'm only uh, in my third year right now, so I've got one more summer as an internship and I wanted to get the in-person experience. So fingers crossed, pandemic, hopefully uh, I'll be good by then. Right, right. But yeah. so it sounded like you, you had a great time and so, if we had to, to conclude, what's the verdict? Should Microsoft be officially added <laughs> to the FANG acronym? Uh, I think it should. And I think some people that maybe put it down a little bit, you should consider the fact that uh, they are definitely a more modern company now. If a lot of people think of them as kind of the old timers. And I would put them on par with, you know, the Googles, Facebooks, and all those other companies of the world, even if they don't have as cool of a logo or a name or whatever you want to call it. So yes, I think so. Definitely. And I think, I think their logo is pretty cool. And also their <laughs> stock is very cool. Their stock's been doing like amazing lately yes but so thank you so much for for sharing all this tim everybody go check out tim's channel uh he's got a great channel about tech i'll put the link in the description below and in the comments below and tim if you've got any last words yeah i think that was pretty much it thanks for having me on clem we did a video on my channel uh clem was on so if you guys want to check that out head over there and yeah thanks again that's gonna be it for this video i hope that you enjoyed it don't forget to smash the like button if you haven't already subscribe to the channel if you haven't already follow me on linkedin and twitter if you enjoy short form written content instagram if you like pictures check out tim's channel check out the video we did on tim's channel and otherwise i will see you in the next video